Good morning. It is good to be here with you this morning and a wonderful morning to all of you. Those of you that are here with us in person and those of you that um, are watching us from home or from a remote location, someplace, um, someplace else, we certainly want it is to be with you this morning. We want to just uh, take a reminder for those of you that um, may not have been familiar with some of our worship protocols right now. We're still in COVID protocols and we ask that you continue to wear masks during worship. And um, I will be removing my mask at um, times when I am a safe distance from you so that those um, with hearing deficiencies may read my lips also, which is an aid to them in understanding and hearing worship. So it's good to be here with you this morning, and we welcome you to this time as we are here, and thank you for coming to celebrate and to worship and to praise our Lord Jesus Christ as we gather together. So again. home and in remote spaces, belt it out loud and clear. Come, now is the time to worship. It is the time to worship. It is the time for us to come together before God and to set aside some time to take that inventory and come before God and ask for God's presence in our lives each and every day. As we do that, we take a time and reflect on this last week or maybe these last few weeks. And so I ask you to take this time for some quiet reflection. Close your eyes if you wish. Take a deep breath. Breathe in God's spirit and breathe out peace to all those that are around you. It is the time for worship, but it's also a time for us as we come before God to take an honest look at those things which maybe didn't go so well things that we said 
or didn't say, things that were done or left undone, times that would be pleasing to God and to our neighbor, times that were not. And we ask God's forgiveness and we ask for God's grace. And we remember the words of scripture in the Psalms where God says, I will take your sin from you and as far as the east is from the west, I will remove it and remember it no more. Because we know that we can come before God at any time and God will always be there to receive us. So another breath in and breathe out all the anxieties and tensions and remember that God's presence is with you and that God's words to Jesus at his baptism are words to you too. You are my child. In you, I am well pleased. And eyes and come back to this space. And we remember that as we respond to God's grace and God's love in the world today, we act in service to others. And to God's call, we Good morning. A reading from 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent jo Joab with his officers to ravage the Ammonites and besiege Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to, to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and then followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord, and did not go down to his house. When they told David, Uriah did not go to, down to his house, David said to Uriah, you have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live, and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On that day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of, the Lord, of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day comes to us from the sixth chapter according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. And Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be left, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left, and by the, those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to pray and to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got in a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. And when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It's I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this summer we've been going through those lessons, semi-continuous lessons through 1st and 2nd Samuel. We're into 2nd Samuel. We have talked about King Saul and now King David as he has come into his own and the rise of David, which we talked about last week. And today starts sort of the demise of David. Um, we hear these lessons, and a lot has been going on in these intervening times. So I would encourage you to read these stories. They're great stories that are here. Because David has been about a lot of war. He's become a warrior king. And there's been a lot of bloodshed. And in the last time, he had made peace with the Ammonites, and they were, they were all getting along. But immediately before this happens, the, um, the Ammonite king has died, and his successor has taken over. And he doesn't care to keep the peace. He doesn't want the old treaties. And as David's messengers come to sort of renew and, and, you know, keep this whole treaty in place, they are humiliated by the Ammonites. There is a tough and hardline response from this king, and he deliberately shaves and defrocks these messengers, and as the scripture says, exposing their manhood. So they are ashamed David has compassion on them and says, you don't need to come back to Jerusalem yet until you kind of get yourselves together here. But they have been provoked now into war. So again, David and his kingdom are at war. 
As this time is here, we see, and I have to tell you that today's lesson is the X-rated lesson. If you wish to leave now, before we get to the X-rated parts, you can leave. For those of you at home that have small children, if they're really small, they won't understand any of this, but um, if you want to cleanse this up for them, feel free. I'm giving you that warning in advance that this is the X-rated part of scripture that comes to us today. David's head is filled with a lot of things. He has all of this stuff going on. He has, he has to go out to war now against the Ammonites again. His people have been humiliated. His soldiers have been humiliated. And yet, with all of these things in his head, it's almost as if David can't really seem to focus. And so here he is, and in our lesson from today in 2 Samuel, it starts out with this amazing kind of line here. We're in the 11th chapter, and it says, In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all of Israel with him. But David remained at Jerusalem. In the spring of the year was the time when kings did go out to battle because they didn't go out in the middle of winter. They didn't have the, the resources to make themselves available for battle in, a, in the middle of a cold winter. But in the spring, they go. Because also, these troops can eat off the land. Because as the spring harvest comes in, they've got food along the way. It was the time when all kings went out to battle. And previously, David had gone at the head of his troops. That was how he captured the hearts of his people. Look at our king. He goes out to lead us in battle. But now, he sends the troops for some reason. Maybe his head so filled with things, he cannot focus on this or anything else. And we have this picture of David perhaps pacing back and forth on the rooftop of his house, his castle that great home of cedar. And he looks down and his head begins to be filled because he sees a beautiful woman. He sees a beautiful woman who is bathing herself in a ritual bath, a mikvah, which is there for every woman at the end of her cycle to be ritually cleansed again. Now, in years past, in decades past, very often there has been a lot of maligning of Bathsheba, how she tempted David, how she was so beautiful that she tempted him. There's actually nothing of that in this scripture. And rather than calling this some romantic liaison between David and Bathsheba, it is more accurately called the rape of Bathsheba. Because make no mistake, there is no balance of power here. David is king. And he deliberately sends and takes her. The language is very clear. He knew who she was. He knew exactly who she was. She was from a notable family. She was from the upper class. Her father was one of David's so-called mighty men. That's recorded in scripture. That her father was known to David. 
Her husband was known to David. He also was one of David's mighty men who went out to battle, who was in the inner circle of the power structure. Even her grandfather had been one of David's chief counselors. David knew full well who she was. And he sent his people for her, lay with her. Not a pleasant scene. Because for David's sin of taking someone else's wife, there are consequences ahead. We don't hear of them in today's lesson except the immediate consequence of that she sends word that she is pregnant. David enters into a series of things that will try and cover up his sin, not just his mistake, his deliberate sin. Ann Perry has said that people lie to cover their mistakes and then they make even worse ones to cover their lies. And I think we all know that maybe we have been in those positions too, or we've observed them in others. David has made a grievous error it is part of this demise of David where we see that his kingship is not all that it should be. And yet, instead of facing his consequences, David tries the cover-up. Quickly send for her husband, and I'll get him to lay with her so that if this baby arrives, he may think that it's his. And yet, his husband has honor and loyalty and says, I'm from the battlefield and, and I can't go home and feel comfortable and accept the comfort of my own home while my men and everyone else is in the battlefield. He tries again a second time. Well, I'll get him really drunk. Doesn't work. David refuses to confront head-on the things that he has done wrong. And he makes it worse for himself. This past week I had a, a note, I saw a note that was posted by a, a, the husband of a friend of mine, a colleague whose husband had just undergone some surgery. And um, as they were facing the next steps and the things from the doctors, they had a lot of hope. They were thankful for the prayers and support of friends and family. And then he had written on a page in a post and said, Bison forward. And then his next post, a couple days later, said, Sorry, I realized that by saying that, some of you might not understand what I meant. He said, it's a term that, that we've been using at the place where I work. He said, our boss told us this story. He said, it has to do with bison or buffalo as opposed to cows. And he said, you know, animals have great instincts. Animals, when a storm is coming and when trouble is ahead, instinctually will take cover or they will seek shelter or have appropriate actions for their species to survive. He said, cows, generally speaking, when a storm is coming in, Cows will run from it and seek shelter someplace else. But they will run in front of the storm. 
He said, but bison are different. For some reason, built into the DNA of the bison and their species, if a storm is coming, they will turn and they will run into the storm. Because they know that confronting a storm head on and running into it will shorten the time period that they are actually involved in the storm because they will run to the other side of it. Whereas the cows run ahead and the storm continues to follow them and they are in the storm for a much longer period. As a leader in business or an organization or with military troops, he said, it's easier to confront the enemy, to confront the storm, to confront the trouble head on and take care of it that way because your time involved in it will be much less and you will be actively working instead of fearfully running. David, up until this point, had been acting like a bison. As a king, he was one who confronted things. But in his demise, we see today, David's a cow. He turned and he tried to run from the things that he himself had caused. It will make his demise extended and drawn out. And we will feel his pain because we too have been there running from problems, running from confrontation running from instead of addressing and confronting and solving the problem at hand. Lincoln had said once that nearly all men can stand adversity. But if you want to test someone's character, give them power. David had power, maybe too much. And as we see now in the writings of 2 Samuel, he begins to let that power take over. The darkness of power can continue to work on someone, especially like David, because he has so much power. We will see the demise of David and the kingdoms and the kings to come after him. But for ourselves today, in looking at these lessons, we remember not to abuse the power that we are given, but instead to use it for the good of all people. And that when problems occur, when there are confrontations, when there are storms that happen, to turn and face them honestly, instead of trying to cover them up, the end will be much better for all of us. So, this week, be a bison, not a cow. Cows are good, but be a bison when looking at problems in the world today and confront the darkness with the light of Christ that comes through all of us. Amen.
I invite you now to stand and join in um, the song for the day, either singing quietly into your mask or at home singing quite loudly that we push back the dark. Please join in. I invite you now to join your prayers with those of people of all times and places as we pray for those that we know and pray for those that are known only to God. And we pray for the church. Bless the ministries of all congregations, especially those close to us. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage all who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration. Let all people may know your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption. Instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire all who have power with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are bowed down with heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, those without health insurance. Console those who grieve. Hear the cries of all who call to you for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly, for all who are here with us, for all who we come to through the, through the magic of technology. Deepen our resolve to use what we have in service to those who are in need. When we worry that we don't have enough, assure us of your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died. As you've sustained them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend the love of Christ that surpasses our knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the nations gather in Tokyo for the Olympics, bring safety and health to those who are there and those who compete. Continue to guide and lead us in the ways of peace that draw nations together and not apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please safely share a sign of peace with your neighbors. For those of you at home, remember to guide your week with peace. You may be seated, and we would ask that you take this time to remember those um, things that God has graced you with and share them as we share our offerings today and give back to God a portion of what God has entrusted to our care. We give thanks for those of you who continue to support this ministry here, whether that's through your bank's bill paying um, systems, through the Dropbox, through mailing in offerings, or if you're here in person, dropping offerings into um, the baskets in the center aisle. Our wicker basket offerings go to support our three designated mission partners this year, and those mission partners are our seminarian, um, who is now on internship in New Jersey. And we thank you and ask for your prayers for Missy Roberts as she continues on this last part of her journey um, toward ordination. We have a mission partner of the Neighborhood Food Pantries to help support and to feed those who are hungry in our area. And we ask for your support too for Ignite the Courage, which is a separate um, nonprofit um, that gives donations to people directly here in Bartlett, supporting them in times of hardship. So we thank you for your donations to the Wicker Baskets also. Now we hear our musical offering for this day, and we give thanks to all of our musicians. never will run dry so living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire just to know you and 
to make you known We lift your name on high Shine like the sun Make darkness run and hide We know we were made for so much more Than ordinary lives It's time for us to more than just survive we were made to thrive Into your word we're digging deep To know our Father's heart Into the world we're reaching out To show them who you are So living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls With one desire Just to know you and to make you know me Lift your name on high Shine like the sun Make darkness warm to hide We know we were made for so much more Than ordinary lives It's time for us to more than just survive We were made Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible. Just to know you and to make you known, we lift your name on high, shine light. The sun made darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. invite you to stand and join me in prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you've set this table with your very self. You call us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his acts of healing, his body given up, his victory over death, we await that day when all the people of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. For through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You, distribution may be um, as you exit the church and will be in the lobby for you at that time. Just a couple of announcements as we dismiss today. First of all, again, a great thanks for those who have gone on the youth mission trip, whether they were our youth or whether they were the sponsors and chaperones. We thank you for your efforts. Also, um, our adults are planning a mission at this time, and as they plan for mission, continue to keep them in your prayers as they reach out into the world with your presence extending beyond the walls of this place and beyond our community. The word of the day today, before the voices behind me begin to tell me that we haven't had the word of the day yet, the word of the day today is bison. Okay? bison. And those of you who have listened will know what that means. <laughs> so the word of the day today for our confirmation students is bison. As we dismiss today, please remember the ushers will dismiss you so that you may exit um, safely. And we thank you for your continuing presence and your continuing um, to keep other people safe. I know that there are many of us here who are saying, look, I'm vaccinated, I'm safe, I'm fine, whatever, I don't care. But we care about others. We have children among us. We have people who, for other reasons, have not been vaccinated yet. And we don't want to spread this any more than, um, than it already has spread. So let's still continue to be safe for this time. And we thank you for masking up. We thank you for encouraging others around you who have not been vaccinated yet to do this so that we may continue to stamp this out and move into a healthier time. Now, as we go forward, charging on, confronting the things that confound us, and remembering not to cheat ourselves and not to lie to others, remember God's word and remember David's example, good and bad so that we may learn from them in our own life. Have the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, let's have one last song about that times when we confront God in those places which are public and which are in secret and sing along quietly through your mask, or if you are joining us from home or a remote location, we thank you for that also. Belt it out there in the secret.
in the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness you are there, in the secret, in the quiet hour I wait only for you, cause I want to know. Pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way, cause I want to know you more. I want to know you, I want to hear your voice. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the secret, in the quiet hour I wait 